We're going to take the Department of Education, close it. I'm going to close it. We'll have one person, could be you, if you decide to retire. You okay, Mr. No, Mr. President, here's what, bothers central me. Cast. Here's, what, here's what bothers me about that. So let's say you have a liberal city, let's say it's Los Angeles, San Diego, and they just decide, they, oh, we're going to get rid of that history. We got new history. This is America built off the backs of slaves on stolen land. Then and that curriculum comes in. Then we don't send them money. We would save half of our budget. Okay. Our opening clip was longtime Russian asset Donald Trump on Fox News on October 18th telling America to get ready. You're about to become Viktor Orban's Hungary if he wins, which means no more democracy in America. And God has help what's left of the free world. Welcome to this week's bonus show of Gaslit Nation. I am your host, Andrea Chalupa, a journalist and filmmaker and the writer and producer of the journalistic thriller, Mr. Jones, about Stalin's genocide famine in Ukraine, a genocide that's repeating today. It has been confirmed that North Korea is invading Europe, sending over 10,000 troops to Ukraine. That means Ukraine is at war with Russia, China, North Korea, and Iran. Meanwhile, Jake Sullivan, Biden's national security advisor, the Merrick Garland of America's Neville Chamberlain national security, refuses to disarm Russia's war machine by letting Ukraine use long-range missiles that we send them to destroy military targets inside Russia, which are deliberately targeting civilians and critical infrastructure across Ukraine. This is how fascism wins. Jake Sullivan would see the storming of the beaches of Normandy as an escalation. Abandoning Ukraine isn't just a betrayal, it's a form of self-abandonment. It's reminiscent of Merrick Garland's DOJ flooding Elon Musk by Twitter with funds from the kids of sanctioned Russian oligarchs, while Musk is now paying for voters in swing states to rally behind Trump. For more on that, check out the show notes of this week's bonus show. When I say grassroots power is the most reliable power we have left, I mean it. We are being fed to fascists by Merrick Garland and Jake Sullivan. To protect ourselves, join me this coming Wednesday at a phone bank with Sister District at 6 p.m. Eastern. Sign up in the show notes. Every phone call we make matters because every vote matters. Are you, is anybody, okay, is there anybody here that's going to vote for Lion Kamala? Please raise your hand. Please raise your hand. Actually, I should say don't raise your hand. It would be very dangerous. We don't want to see anybody get hurt. Please don't raise your hand. In this week's bonus show, we'll tackle an urgent question from a Gaslit Nation listener for our special bonus Q&A produced by our supporters at the Democracy Defender level and higher. Then we'll continue our discussion with Ellie Mistal, the nation's justice correspondent and author of Allow Me to Retort, A Black Guy's Guide to the Constitution. Ellie's insights will enrage you. <laughs> as they did me in this discussion, we will be looking at the threats to our democracy posed by Merrick Garland, one of the worst attorney general appointments in America's history. And we will be fantasizing about who should be President Kamala Harris's attorney general and how do we get there? How do we finally get there? Because we've long been gaslit. We've long been abused. The wolves are close. No, I'm not going to insult wolves. The white men are closing in on our democracy. And so we need people of moral courage and moral strength to push back. I need to finally give our grassroots community some rest and just say to everyone, finally, finally, we have the institutional support and commitment and moral leadership at the top to help us so that we are no longer alone. But until that happens, until we get an attorney general that is on the side of the American people and not on the side of elite criminal impunity, it is unfortunately up to our tired souls to do this critical work of safeguarding our democracy. We will get there, America. We are pushing for that. We are demanding that. We're raising our voices for that. So do not miss this urgent discussion with Ellie Mistal 
It is a compelling one, and I'm so grateful for his voice in the world. The idea that Garland brought to the table was this kind of restoring integrity and nonpartisanship to the Justice Department. And by being an institutionalist, Biden himself an institutionalist, that made sense to Biden. It was the worst pick of his administration. I like to say that Merrick Garland is the worst appointment in two successive Democratic administrations because he's the worst Biden appointment. And he was the worst possible pick for Obama for that uh, Supreme Court spot. To catch the full episode, make sure you are subscribed at the truth teller level or higher on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash gaslit. We also offer discounted annual memberships. A huge thank you to everyone supporting our independent journalism. And don't miss our How to Make a Podcast workshop launching October 24 on Patreon. Plus, mark your calendars for Tuesday, October 29 at 12 p.m. Eastern when we host a live taping with Dr. Bandy Lee. We'll dive into the psyche of Trump's MAGA cult and discuss strategies for dealing with the MAGA Nazis in your life. Got a question for Dr. Bandy Lee? Shoot us a message over Patreon. I'll be dropping the Zoom link for our live interview there, so be sure to subscribe and join our exclusive events. This week, we're answering a question from Gaslit Nation listener, Melissa. It's a two-parter. We'll start with part one this week. Melissa asks, Hi, Andrea. Seriously, are we ever getting back our beloved USPS and throwing out DeJoy for the anti-democratic garbage that he is. Very well said, Melissa. Thank you so much for your question. Let's talk about Louis DeJoy, everyone. You may remember him <laughs> as the reason why you don't know if your Hallmark card is going to make it or not and, and why all your mail is late. He is the Trump mega donor turned USPS overseer who has become infamous for dragging down mail delivery and squeezing postal workers like a classic Reagan-era budget cut. If you check out his testimony before Congress in April, the comment section is horror stories from postal workers facing horrible changes and indifference and also just downright abuse from management while they hustle to deliver our mail under increasing pressure. Senator Jackie Rosen of Nevada, a must-win swing state, didn't hold back when she grilled DeJoy during the recent Senate hearing. You have to hear DeJoy's Trumpian responses. Under your proposal, if one of my constituents in Reno were to mail a birthday card to her mother who lives on the other side of town, the letter is going to be driven 130 miles over to Sacramento, California, and then sent 130 miles back to Nevada to reach its final destination. I point this out because in order to take local mail from Reno to Sacramento and back to Reno as you propose, your trucks will need to go through the Donner Pass. Hope you're familiar with that. It's on I-80. It's the only way to get through Reno to Sacramento, which is subject to some of the most extreme weather conditions in the contiguous United States, with over 33 feet of snow annually, 100 mile per hour winds, and treacherous conditions during wildfire season. So, Mr. DeJoy, Yes or no, do you happen to know how many days per year, on average, the Donner Pass is closed due to extreme weather conditions? Why would I know that? Well, you're the Postmaster General, and you're saying that you're going to go over this. So let me tell you, there were 15 road closures for over 37 days of closures just last winter alone. So, yes or no, before you proposed your plan to move out of Reno, did you collect data on the potential impact to mail service from severe weather conditions on Donner Pass? Yes or no, please. Yes, within the organization. We so have can I have that data? Your team has refused to send, give that to us. We are the oversight committee. I believe that the United States Congress has a right to this information. I will give you the data that we have. I'll get with the team and Thank send you. you the data we have. So how do you plan to get the mail? Maybe you want to uh, tell us how you plan to get the mail from Reno to Sacramento and back to Reno when there's only one route. I say one route, I-80, to take that 260-mile round trip when it's closed on an average of 37 days per year. Let, me, let me start with the fact that the, we're not we're investing significantly in the Reno facility to repurpose it for what we, what we feel is the modern day need for, for postal service. The mail that we're moving, only 10 percent of it. We're only moving so you want to sacrifice 10 percent of my folks in rural Nevada. I've got sacrifice. I have rural Nevadans, veterans and seniors that still rely on this. That 10 percent if it's you're in the 10%, it's everything. So a standard contingency plan here, Mr. DeJoy, is not going to work. 
The extreme conditions in Sierra Nevada mountains require you to undertake an extensive analysis to ensure all Nevadans, all Nevadans, even that 10%, get their mail on time. You don't get to sacrifice those living in my rural areas or subject to harsher weather in the name of cost savings. The Postal Service has an obligation to deliver to everyone. So why is DeJoy still clinging to his position, especially as Americans increasingly vote by mail? Eight states now, California, Hawaii, Nevada, Colorado, Oregon, Vermont, Utah, and Washington hold all mail elections, meaning elections are primarily held by mail, but not exclusively. As mailing in ballots becomes increasingly normalized, we obviously need a USPS that's not ran by a toxic Reagan revolution swamp monster. In response to pressure from Democrats in Congress flooding him with letters saying, for the love of God, replace to joy, Biden has been making some chess moves. He's been nominating, for instance, former Congresswoman Val Demings and a Republican businessman by the name of William Zollers, which rhymes with dollars, which makes him seem like... There's only one thing better than owning a vault full of cold, hard cash, and that's swimming in it. Marty Walsh, the former labor secretary, he's also been appointed. So that's a hopeful sign because the postal workers have been mistreated. So having Marty Walsh, a labor guy in there, is a very good sign that these recent Biden appointments are trying to put a check on DeJoy's Reagan excesses. To be clear, Marty Walsh, the former labor secretary, and Val Demings, the former House Democratic member from Florida, they both still need to be confirmed by the Senate, which is currently in Democratic hands. Democrats might lose it. They make it onto the board. We would have three Republicans and five Democrats but they would need all five Democrats to vote to remove DeJoy. And if all Democrats are not united in removing DeJoy, then they would need the independent on the board, Amber McReynolds, a vote-by-mail champion who prides herself on being nonpartisan. If you listen to a clip of McReynolds, who was appointed by Biden later in this episode, it doesn't sound like they're going to have her vote because she's saying that everything's fine. DeJoy became notorious for his infamous cost-cutting measures, which have endangered people living in rural areas, and especially senior citizens who depend on the mail for prescription drugs. And his greatest hits were dismantling sorting machines, creating epic backlogs just before the 2020 election, a time when timely ballot delivery was, you know, determining the fate of the world. Is it safe to vote by mail today? The best strategy, especially since we want to avoid this being our last election, is to vote early in person if you can. Bring snacks, water, a hat, sunscreen, and even a chair if that's allowed where you live. Wait in line, vote in person. That's the best way. But if you absolutely must vote by mail, get that ballot in ASAP. Remember, different states have different deadlines for when ballots must be received. So double check your registration wherever you live in this country, know the rules where you vote. That's never been more important. Trump, MAGA, already has their goon squad of lawyers ready to go to challenge everywhere. They need this election to come down to one or two states so they can kick it to the Supreme Court and let the MAGA court decide our fate. And we cannot allow that to happen. I want to now go into some of DeJoy's swampy, Trumpian, Reagan-esque greed that is where our country is headed if we don't stop Trump and force Democrats to do more to get these guys out. In 2021, reports surfaced that the USPS was set to pay $120 million over five years to XPO Logistics, a firm with which DeJoy has had extensive financial ties He previously led XPO's supply chain division after they purchased his former business, New Breed Logistics, while he did divest a significant amount of his XPO shares upon taking office as our postmaster general. His family's businesses still lease office space to XPO, potentially raking in up to $23.7 million in rent payments. If you want to know how corruption works in countries like Hungary, 
That's how it operates. USPS awarded XPO the contract to manage operations at major sorting and distribution centers, while USPS spokespeople claimed Dejoy stayed clear of the procurement process, meaning deciding who gets contracts and why, and they claim he adhered to ethics rules. Critics were like, I'm going to believe my eyes and ears. You're obviously shoving our tax dollars in your pockets. Ethics watchdogs argue that DeJoy's financial links to XBO present a troubling appearance of impropriety. That's a very polite way to say you're stealing from us. Even if everything's technically above board, your family's clearly getting richer by you being postmaster general. This deal has sparked fears of privatization among postal unions who feel that outsourcing work once handled by USPS employees puts their jobs in danger. And I want to point out to those who haven't sent a postcard in a while, DeJoy hiked stamp prices by 8%. So he's been slashing services while raising prices in a perfect Reagan revolution storm. We're paying more for less. What's troubling about this is that I heard a Biden appointed member of the USPS Board of Governors, which I mentioned earlier. This is an independent. Her name is Amber McReynolds. She's the vice chairman of the USPS Board of Governors. I'll play the clip now. Here's one voter who says they can't trust Louis DeJoy at the head of the Postal Service. So what do you say? Well, first, in in 2020, um, and, and again, this was obviously before my time on the Board of Governors, but Uh, The Postal Service performance during the 2020 general election was the highest on-time delivery for election mail that it had ever been, which was 99.93%, sorry, 89%, almost 0.9%, so 99.9% on time. Um, And it actually increased in 2022. And so since 2020, the Postal Service and part of this, you know, I joined the board. I also chair the Election Mail and Government Committee, which is now a permanent committee of the Board of Governors. Uh, There has been an expansion of how of our management and our structures and our services and our training and even our outreach to election officials. And all of this has happened within the last four years. And the, you know, whole purpose was to strengthen how we deliver the elections uh, mail nationwide and and how we best serve the American public. And we, so there's been significant improvements and I have confidence that, that, that voters will continue to feel uh, that great service nationwide. To summarize, the system of checks and balances seems to be working so far when it comes to vote by mail. And it seems that this independent, this Amber McReynolds, a swing voter on the board needed to get rid of DeJoy. She seems pretty satisfied. So there you go. Don't give your hopes up if you hear exciting news that Val Demings and Marty Walsh have been confirmed by the Senate. If If the Senate, especially a Republican Senate, confirms them, that means that the Republicans feel confident that Democrats will still not have the votes needed to remove DeJoy. Our vote by mail, of course, it may survive another election, but DeJoy doesn't have term limits. The guy can die in power. Okay, so maybe our checks and balances are holding on by a thread now. There's no promise it's always going to be like that, especially with him in power. Now let's dive into the next segment with Ellie Mistal, the nation's justice correspondent, discussing who should be the next attorney general as well as the threat to our democracy that is Merrick Garland. To catch the full episode, be sure to subscribe at patreon.com forward slash gaslit. Thank you to everyone who supports the show. I know it's dark out there. There's a lot of DeJoys and Garlands and Jake Sullivans that we're up against. It's infuriating. I know. I feel it too. If you need to vent, if you need a place to hang out, Come to our Gaslit Nation political salons Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern over Zoom. I share the link to our crew on Patreon at the Truth to Level and Higher. I will see you all there this Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern. Thank you so much. Stay strong. Stay in the fight. Make your phone calls. We are going to get through this. We are going to ultimately prevail over fascism just like we did before. I deal with this a lot with people 
making arguments that they think that should be made to the Supreme Court, pointing out the Republican justices, either their own hypocrisy or their own alleged principles. And I keep trying to tell people the Republican justices do not give a fuck. They understand that they are hypocrites and they don't care. What they want is the outcome. What they want are Trumpian Republican outcomes. And they will do or say whatever they have to say, to quote Lewis Gossett Jr., fair or unfair to get their way. That's what they're going to do. Only thing that helps is for Harris to win, not just by one state, but in an electoral college landslide. I do not think the Supreme Court can overturn an electoral college landslide. But if it's close, absolutely the Supreme Court will give this election to Trump. And you don't think there's any... Well, I know that Alito and Thomas and Trump's judges are obviously a lost cause, but you don't think Roberts might be... I know Roberts is, is pure evil. Like he's been salivating over gutting our democracy since he was in Reagan's DOJ. But you don't think that maybe they might be holding out for a more posh Trump, like a J.D. Vance, and that there's sort of like a migraine that they might have over the chaos that Trump brings. Like, Any, anybody who thought that should have ended that hope when they read Robert's immunity decision. 